good to see everyone today. You know, one of the things that, uh, with the sense of the uncertainty of the COVID increasing in some places, and not knowing if any time we're going to hear those words, shut everything down like we did before. And uh, that one of the things we've been wanting to do as your pastors is, is trying to keep everything as a semblance of normal as much as we can. And I so appreciate the teachers preparing and, you know, whether we have two kids or we have 13 kids or whatever, they've been so faithful to prepare. And I, I appreciate that. And, and even next, uh, today, I hope that you'll come out and be with us. You know, wear a mask, wear a hat, bring your lawn chair, and we're just going to worship the Lord. But there's something about the body of Christ. Uh, again, it's outside. And uh, there's something about the body of Christ saying, you know, we've been shut down so many things this year, lost so many things this year. Uh, the church lambs fellowship to say, hey, come worship at our place. We're outside. Come today. I know we have made plans for lunch and everything else, so we're just going to go home and grab a sandwich, and we'll eat afterwards. But, uh, you know, because Sunday's our day of usually with family having a meal or with our church family having a meal. So, you know, we're going to make some plans with our schedule today, but come, go to it. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Then the other thing that Mike just mentioned, you know, it, we'll only do it if we have enough people sign up to do it. Like the dinner, you know, and the ladies, you know, I really hope that you ladies will be excited. We're going to arrange this and you'll social distance and wear your mask. And Carol's already bought her. I know, I drove her. She'd already got her little Christmas ornament. And uh, she didn't just buy one. That's all I'm going to say. I'll get in trouble. But, you know, just we're trying to do what we can. And uh, uh, I, I'm praying that this is all going to end. This whole thing is going to end. And, you know, they keep talking about having a, uh, uh, an injection, uh, you know, for all of us to take someday. And, uh, you know, even that, I'm going to wait a little bit because I don't know what's in that injection. You know, I just don't want to put something in my body. No now you're cured. You can't get COVID or whatever. You know, I, I've got to find out. So should you before we would submit to something like that. But, you know, it is what it is. And um, I, I do know that God is our protection. God is our health. I mean, uh, we're trying to do everything we can to go by the guidelines. And uh, uh, But God is, ultimately, God is our health. God is our strength. The Bible says in uh, Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed unto a man wants to die. God knows the day of our going home to be with Him. And so we don't have to be fearful of that day, but even look forward to welcoming that day, because uh, the Lord knows when He's going to call us home. And so I just wanted to just share some of those things with you. Um, so thankful that we can... I, I looked at the screen, and there's folks that, that are watching right now that are not comfortable coming back to church yet. And so God bless them for technology that we could be doing the service right now. We had like 115 people watch last Sunday's service. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matt uh, graciously uh, had recorded in the back Apostle Dave uh, on a, a really good camera that he's got there. So if you go to you go to YouTube, you'll get just Dave's message. We had 60-something people watch that and 100-something people watch the whole service. And so, you know, we're, uh, we're getting the word out there. <coughs> But um, we're not going to, as Vivian said last week, we're not going to live in fear. We're not going to live in fear. And so, I want to share with you today uh, this message. What voice of authority will I listen to? My message is, what voice of authority will I listen to? Question mark. And so I want to answer that question. But it's a question for all of us today. And... Uh, I want to say, if you haven't been here for a few weeks, again, go on the social media, catch up with what, what's going on. One of the things that we <clears throat> have been doing is that we have been praying for the election before and even afterwards. And we've been asking God to expose wickedness, expose uh, things that have been done in secret, that God would expose this. Because all of us as Christians as well as citizens should want our leaders to be the uh, rightfully 
uh, elected leaders and not just done anything done by stealth uh, or dishonesty or cheating. And so we've been praying on, on Wednesday night, God, reveal darkness. Reveal the plans of the enemy. And you know what? God hears that type of prayer. And, and God, uh, don't never be, never be surprised when God removes somebody out of a place of authority. Amen. Never be surprised. Because as I taught you weeks ago, God is the one that puts one in and takes one out. But the church has a big part of praying and seeking God and asking. For, we as Christians have a right to say, God, we want godly uh, leadership from the president on down. God, we pray for godly leadership to lead our land. And that is a, that is a right way to pray. And so God, remove those that are ungodly. And so uh, I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Ecclesiastes. The first chapter in verse 9. We will look at three scriptures today. I love to hear those pages rustling with your Bible. And, uh, you know, Christmas is coming soon. If you want a Bible, a new Bible, you know, now is the time to put your request in. Those Amazon people are pretty cheap and pretty good about getting it to you, as well as other places. Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, and we're looking at verse 9. I want to wait till everybody gets the Ecclesiastes is right after uh, Proverbs, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Ecclesiastes uh, says in that verse nine, "That which has been is what will be done." Excuse me. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. God says that all the changes in life, He knows everything. And we need to remember that. With all the changes in life, nothing escapes Him. He knows it all. Nothing creeps up on God. And He also says there that there is nothing new under the S-U-N. But I'd like to say... There's nothing new under the S-O-N. There's nothing new under the S-O-N. God's Son, our Savior. And the reason that we can have confidence is, is because we have a relationship with the Son. Aren't you glad you have a relationship with the Son? The real Son? The Son of God? The Lord Jesus Christ? Because we have a relationship with the Son, government can change. Yes. But the Bible says, as I said a minute ago, God raises up kings, Amen. governors, senators, congressmen, mayors. God raises them up and God puts them down because ultimately it's with God. But He wants us as part of the process. God said that you are part of my process, but we must understand God's authority. God has authority over everything. He has not rescinded one bit of His authority on the earth. Amen. That's right. He has not rescinded one thing. So we must understand God's authority and God's plan. That's very important for you to understand that God has authority and God has plans. And refer to this election again. This is a time of warfare that I don't think we as the Church of Jesus Christ in America had ever gone through. I mean, we had the first, we had World War One, we had World War Two. I know that um, we had the Revolutionary War. Uh, we've had times in our nation. But I tell you, this election, uh, and I'm speaking to you who are believers today, uh, this has been spiritual warfare. It has been for the whole four years that our, our president has been in. It's just been warfare. And so with that in mind, uh, on our knees, we need to be. And using our weapons of prayer and crying out to God, of what I mentioned to you before about God, expose wickedness and God reveal your choice. Can we say that? God reveal your choice. Reveal your choice. Because I tell you, uh, God knows what's best for America than we do. God's not a Republican, God's not a Democrat, or a Libertarian, or Green Party, or whatever. God knows what's good for America. That's why the unseen army 
the church need to be crying out to God because our prayers affect society. Our prayers have a lot to do with salting our society with our prayers and our influence that people don't even have a clue. They're just going on their little merry way with whatever they're doing in our life. But behind the scenes, the church of Jesus Christ is praying and crying out to God. Yes. And so I want to continue that this coming Wednesday. We're going to continue to pray. We'll take Thanksgiving week off. And uh, let's continue to pray. We're going to continue to pray uh, several weeks in December. Uh, it's been a great time. We've been seeking the Lord. But this scripture says that there's nothing new under the sun. Right, and that causes us to smile Amen. and to rejoice because we know that God's in control. Amen. God, you are in control and there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. We need to remember that. There's nothing new under the sun with God. I'd like for you to look at another scripture today. We're going to look at this one and one more. and I'm just going to be sharing the richness of, can't even get through all of this because it book of Ephesians is uh, the mountaintops of the New Testament. Ephesians, the third chapter, and we're going to look at verses 11 to 15. Ephesians 4, oh, excuse me, Ephesians 3, verses 14 and 19. I've got, got mixed up here. I've got two scriptures for Ephesians for today. Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 19. Paul is writing to this wonderful church in Ephesus. And he says, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. I love this scripture. Amen. I read it a lot. Yes. I think it's a good one for us to memorize. It's so important. God is saying here, that I'm, I'm explaining to you what the call not only of the individual Christian, but I'm also telling you the call of the church. And we are the church today. We are the church of Jesus Christ. The call of the church by God. And I'll just mention some of those things in that verse. He said that we might be strengthened by His Spirit in the inner man. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you just love that? Yes. That we might be strengthened by the Spirit, big S, by the Holy Spirit in the inner man. He's talking about the recreated spirit. If you know Christ as your Savior, you have a recreated spirit. You are brand new. And you are you are brand new. You're created. Uh, you're a new creation in Christ. Uh, it's the new you. It's uh, taking you to another level. It's the recreated spirit. It's beyond, listen, it's beyond your emotions. It's beyond your intellect. It's beyond even your understanding. And even this thing on our shoulders, our mind. It is Christ, my brothers and sisters, living in you through faith. Christ living in you through faith. And he's saying there, and, and we need a, a big hallelujah, we would be strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. Every day I can be strengthened by His Spirit on the, yes. on the new yes. created person that I am. But when this Spirit in us, which is eternal, do you know your spirit eternal? Yes. Your body will stop, but you will live forever. Woo. You'll live in one of two places. You'll live in hell because you rejected Christ, or you will live in heaven. Both of those are eternal. We choose. We choose. So the new you uh, is being renewed by the Holy Spirit. Christ living in you through faith. And then I love this word here. It says that you being rooted and grounded in love. But you, 
personalize it. Take your finger and just tap yourself on the chest. But you, come on. You. You. You, you uh, being rooted and grounded in love. Let's say that together. You being rooted and grounded in love. What does that mean? It means being rooted like a tree. How many of you have ever seen pictures of somehow a tree, because there was either erosion or an earthquake or something, all of a sudden a tree with its roots washed on shore uh, of an ocean? Mm -hmm. And you see the tree, it's kind of mangled a little bit with all the branches and everything, but what do you see at the very bottom? You see this root system, and you're going, my goodness, it took a lot to uproot that tree with all of its roots. Yeah. Paul is using the same analogy here as a tree. You being rooted and grounded in love. It's like a tree that goes deep. I'm telling you, the work of God in your life that continues to this day is rooting you where your roots are going to go deep. And some trees actually grab, if there's a rock, they'll grab that rock. And I'm telling you, you ever wonder how these palm trees, the wind is blowing and, and they're just bending like this and they never snap? I know. Part of it is the root system. Part of it is it's because they've learned why fight the wind, just go with it. There's a message there. There's a message. God, I'm not going to fight what you're doing in my life. I just need to go with it. Amen. And that wind will pass and there it is that tall skinny palm tree is still standing this tree over here is the pine tree and i'm every time the wind really blows i get nervous because the way it bent like that i'm thinking god if that thing ever breaks it's going to wipe out half the fellowship hall have you ever seen it out here it's huge our landlords the two landlords that, that have been there while we've been here have resisted trimming it a little bit I said, well, God, you're just going to have to take care of this building no matter. Yes. And then this, this, things are going like this. Big four. Yes. Yeah. God wants you rooted. Mm -hmm. He wants you rooted in love. Mm -hmm. He wants you rooted in the love of God, the agape. The other love is going to fail you. It won't sustain you. But you being rooted in Christ, being rooted in his love, here's what it means, that you're secure and you're not moving. Amen. Isn't that great? Yes. You're secure. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, you're secure today. He's our security. Mm -hmm. And we continue to grow in Him. We are rooted. Now the roots go deep. We're secure. We're not moving. Amen. The other word there is the word grounded. Rooted and grounded. What does the word grounded mean? It means like a building. It means like you're like a building that has a solid foundation. Ephesians says that the church is founded at Jesus on the cornerstone and also on the apostles and prophets. You know, it was so good last week that we had an apostle, our apostle with us. Yes. I don't know if you, if you weren't here, you really need to get a hold of that message and, and listen to it because Dave shared some significant things. Grounded like a building, our solid foundation in Jesus Christ. And so it says there that you can understand and that it goes beyond your knowledge. It's the revelation of His love that gives you all the signs of understanding. I want to say that again. It's the revelation of His love that gives you all sides of understanding. Look at the words that it uses there. It uses the word, may be able to comprehend with all the same, width, length, depth, and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. I want to say that again. It's the revelation of his love that gives you all sight and understanding. The width, the length, the depth, and the height. To know the love of Christ that is greater. It goes beyond head knowledge. You know, we can have head knowledge, but not heart knowledge. That's right. You know that. 
I want heart knowledge. Amen. I don't want to try to figure, well, that's a nice little sermon. I'll just check the list of another nice one. It was great. No, God, I want a revelation of this. I want a revelation of the width and the length and the depth and the height of the love of God. That's all those things that God has for us. And we will continue on in that way. We will continue on to know width, height, length, depth of His love. Mm -hmm. That's what God has for all of us as Christians. Yes. That's what God has for all of us. It's real. It's so real for all of us as believers. And I want to say this. Every day we need to progress in this. Every day we're progressing. You may not think you're progressing, but I tell you, the more I love Jesus, I know I'm progressing. I know I'm, pro I'm going on. I'm not staying in the same place. One of the things that I was reading in my devotions is that Hebrews 5 and 6 talks about the, the, the danger of not progressing. And I want to progress. I want to grow. I want to mature. I don't want to be satisfied at what God did for me six weeks ago or six years ago or 40 years ago. I want to progress. Do you want to progress yes. today? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to know the love of God which is the width and the height and the length and the depth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That should be a desire in all of us. Which can take me to my last scripture. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and verses 11 to 15. Ephesians 4, 11 to 15. Are you there? And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful body. Verse 15, but speaking the truth and love may grow up in all things into him who is the head. The question that I believe a lot of people are asking with everything that's going on where is the word of truth because there's many voices where is the word of truth where is the voice of authority are you hearing me where is the word of truth and where is the voice of authority and our answer would be obviously that's God but I want, because we are on the same book of Ephesians, to talk about why God even gave the fivefold ministry. And we're exploring this question is, what voice of authority will I listen to? The fivefold ministry was given for a reason. And this was the authority of man. It was not the authority of man, it was the authority of God. The authority of God is what established the fivefold ministry. It was given for a reason. This given authority by God is so we can, we can, and listen to this, you got to hear this, equip the saints and come into maturity. Why are you here today? We worship our King. We had a chance to give. We haven't had a chance to hear testimony today. Our children are in Sunday school. But we ministered to the Lord. Why are we here? For your equipping. For your preparation. You are being equipped. You are being prepared to come into the place of maturity. And we read just in this scripture here. It means that God wants some grown-up believers. Amen. He wants some grown-up believers. He doesn't want you to remain babies. It'd be sad to be a Christian for 40 years, to be 60 years old, and you're still a baby. Because we haven't grown, or we haven't embraced growing. We're satisfied to wear diapers, or have a bottle in our mouth. 
How many of you parents would like your kids to stay two years old? I know I wouldn't. I don't want to change diapers for 40 years. Or put a bottle in their mouth. Or tell them to stay out of trouble. And give them toys to play with because they're not mature. Equipping the saints and bringing those saints into the place of maturity is the reason that God gave the fivefold ministry. Make no doubt about it. God's given them the authority to do it. Because God wants grown up believers. But we need to understand what it says there that God wants us to come into the fullness of Christ. He wants us to come into the fullness, the full measure of what Christ is. That's our goal. That is the goal for every believer I hope today, and those that are watching, that they don't want to stay a baby. They want to grow in Christ. But it costs something. It costs something. And the cost is that I press through and desire. Paul, not Paul, but the writer of Hebrews said, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. He says, you should be eating milk in Hebrews uh, five and six, but you are, I have to give you the bottle again. And then he talked about the elementary principles of the first teachings of being a Christian. He says, I want you to grow up and eat meat. That's why this issue of what voice of authority will I listen to is so important for us that we need to have it settled because there are many voices vying for our attention. Is that true? The real problem here, and he says there, uh, verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Tossed to and fro. Believers tossed here and there by the latest that the wind blows in, the latest teaching, the latest fad. That's why when we did this church and the church in Rancho is we didn't build on fads. We weren't a deliverance church. We weren't a prophecy church. Because I know that that's going to blow over real quick. The people are going to be out the door to the next thing that tickles their fancy. Paul talked about believers uh, heaping teachers unto themselves that want their ears tickled. A balanced church is what I have been striving for for these almost 35 years. That you would be balanced. That you would understand the cross and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And you would understand what it means to walk in obedience. I'm just touching the surface. Because there's so many things out there that are just wanting to blow believers one way or another. The latest fact. And I've seen people, even in our own church, hey, you know what, this guy's got a, he's got a ministry, or they have a ministry of the second coming, and I don't get enough second coming teaching in this church, so off I go. So they left their church home to go find a church that deals with the second coming, or, you know, they're really in the deliverance, they're doing demons every Sunday. I'll just say this, I don't go looking for demons, but when they show up, I deal with them. And so should you. And so should you. The latest teaching, sloppy grace, never have to repent, you know, we're just under grace. We could really get into that whole thing. A lot of Christians are out of balance in a lot of ways. Every wind of doctrine to and fro. And one of the reasons that God wants us to be in maturity, to grow up maturity, is so when you hear a fad or you hear something, you can say, you can say, praise God. People are being saved, healed, delivered, filled with the Spirit, or they, they, might, they might even have an emphasis on a certain teaching. But you know what? As for me, I'm just going to keep plowing. Amen. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. Don't be tossed by everything good and it's just completely out of balance. Tossed here and there by the latest, the wind is blown in. And Sadly, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, it comes through people. And why does the devil use cunning craftiness? Why 
that the devil used these people for a deceitful fight. Here it is. To trick you, deceive you, to get you distracted, and you'll follow them rather than Christ. Did you hear that? The reason the whole trickery, the cunning, and everything else is usually because they're after your pocketbook. They want a following. And it's the latest and the greatest, and it just sounds so good. But we remain babies. Listen, you can't grow eating dessert all the time. You'll have a lot of pimples. <laughs> and you, you won't be healthy. That's why a local church with a local pastor will give you a balanced diet. Thank God for... Amen. You can watch a lot of people on uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are pastors with churches, but some of them are not. They just want you to watch them and follow them and give to them, and they don't talk about the need for us building relationally. Building relationally. The main thing, away from all these doctrines, the wind and the waves that are carrying all this different thing in, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. And we need to understand that, big, that we are part of his plan. The local church is God's idea. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher uh, is God's idea for the, for the church to grow and mature. Let me just talk honestly and frankly with you. During this whole COVID-19 season, there are some marked things that are happening, that have happened. COVID is undermining authority. COVID is destroying relationships. Yeah. Dave mentioned something last week that a lot of people are not going back to their church. And that's sad because what about the authority of their church? Some people are just not going at all for whatever reason. But COVID, the enemy is using it to undermine the authority of the local church. Hey, I don't really need that anymore. I can just watch the screen. And I'm sorry, that's not church. It's the convenience. It's the blessing. But the screen is not the local church. It's been undermining authority. Now, I really don't need that. I've got other voices that I listen to. It's also destroying relationships, and let me explain why. Because people are secluded, and they're being controlled. Now, what are we all expecting to hear any time? What have happened for a few months? Shut down. Shut down. Our governor was rebuked by a court judge that he went too far with making all these laws. Our governor was rebuked that when he sent out all these ballots to all kinds of people, this happened yesterday, the judge, or Friday, the judge said that our governor, and we pray for him, we're not being disrespectful, but our governor broke the Constitution by putting all these ballots into the mail for everybody to vote. He broke the law. The enemy has a plan. I want you to hear this. The enemy has a plan to undermine God's authority and he's also wanting to destroy relationships. And I'll tell you why. We are secluded, we are controlled, and we can't touch each other. Why are we separated by... We can't touch each other. And when we can't touch each other, we become spiritual eunuchs. Let me explain. What is a eunuch? A eunuch was a person that was mutilated that they can't reproduce. And when we can't touch each other, we cannot produce the life of God the way God wants to produce in the church because we are secluded. They either don't come or don't touch me. We got six foot, you know, six foot. You know, remember, mass? Is it true? It's true. We can't hug each other. You take a chance. 
We can't touch one another. We can't break bread together. We're trying to do some things here people will respond because we realize that the church is not being the church that we can't touch each other. We can't hug. We can't, we can't, you know, get on the laying on of hands and the ministry and everything else that's going on because we're secluded. We're controlled. And I tell you, eunuchs can't reproduce and we can't produce the life that God has being secluded and controlled. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Eunuchs cannot reproduce. People need to be together and touch one another. We've been told we can't do that. I wrote it down. I'll just say it again. Screens can't cut it. It's impersonal. And the dynamic of the church gathering with the Holy Spirit can't come through a screen. That's right. Do you believe that? Someone might say, well, I'm happy with that. You're wrong. You should never be happy with that unless you're bound in bed and you just can't go. Or you're too afraid to go and maybe when this passes, hopefully you'll come back to church. I don't want to be insensitive. But I will not accept that screens are the normal for the church of Jesus Christ. The blessing, but it's not normal. Gathering is powerful because the authority of God is there. People are looking for a word of truth. And so when we're not into this word, and this word is not in us, I tell you, it's easy to listen to voices. Voices that people will give authority to, to speak into their life. And I want to tell you, that's a dangerous place to be. Because only Jesus Christ has that right of authority in our life. But I also tell you boldly, based on what you just, what I read to you, the church of Jesus Christ, his authority should have a place of speaking in our life. When Carol and I came out here in 1986, and we realized that our relationship, and I was just so thankful that the Lord allowed Dave and Vivian to come be with us. They stayed with us for a day, and they were with all of you, and and everything else. It was a great time. Um, when the Lord told us to go to Lake Elsinore and we came, we realized that our relationship with them would change because we wouldn't be seeing them every Sunday. It would change. And so, whenever we would meet in Corona, or go to the Sizzler there, or Bob Big Boy, or, or whatever, how many have been to those places in Corona? How many of you just know about it? Please don't tell me you're getting hungry. <laughs> we would meet and we would sit at a table for hours because we had missed that relationship. But let me tell you what I always took with me. I always took a piece of paper with me because I realized that man would start talking and we would get past the kids, talking about kids, talking about how our churches were doing. Elsinore and Rancho. And then he would start talking and I would take this piece of paper with me and I would start writing because what he had to say was of such value to me. Sometimes I would forget my yellow piece of paper and I would grab a napkin. And there was a lot of times that I've written with a pencil or a pen on a napkin and folded it up and put it in my wallet because there were things said that even benefited you from what he said to my life. That meant so much to me of being able to continue the relationship. We need to be careful that we begin to look at other voices rather than the authority of God in our life and the authority of the Bible. So good to see people with Bibles today. The authority of the Word of God in your life and you're, you're reading it and you're applying it to your life. That is, that is, that is your daily manna that you cannot substitute. Man. Amen. But also, the voice of your shepherd and those that God has placed in your life. See, one of the other voices we have to deal with is the lie 
of our flesh, and I'm going to tell you something, I raise both hands, my flesh lies to me. Yep. It's a liar. It has appetite, it has its own voice, but the Word of God is God's authority that I know that I've got to tell that old flesh, that old nature, that old person, you're not going to win today. Amen. But listen, there's something else with those other voices. It's the, it is the voices of the world spirit. That's right. It's the voices of the world spirit that you and I, have. we hear every day. You hear it at work. You hear it on the street corner. You hear it wherever you go. There are voices that vie for authority in your life. Am I speaking truth here? Yes. They are vying for attention. And a lot of the deception that can come to us through the world system, it seduces you. Pretty soon you're believing something and you're practicing something and living a lie and you thought, where, where did I get that from? That's right. We have to filter the voices through the Word of God. And I, there are many voices. You hear them and I hear them, but what about what God said? One of the things that's so important for you and I is that God not only has the last word, but I have got to know what God says so I can agree with God. But if I don't know what God says about something, I can be seduced that's right. and believing something that God never intended for me. They're just a plain lie. And a lot of times the lie will come to other people, sometimes even family members, sometimes it's all the little screams. You're bombarded with this and bombarded with this and you're bombarded with this and pretty soon I've heard it enough, it's got to be a true. It's got to be true. And it's not. But when I have the word of truth and the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be able to discern, oh, if there's ever a time, Christians, that we need to discern what voice... What spirit is speaking? What voice is speaking? And why we need to understand God has given us the word of God, but he's also given us the authority of the church. Some people, and here's what the enemy says, the Bible and the local church is not relevant. Here, it's not essential. They may not put it in those words, but the Bible is essential for your life. Amen. God's word has not changed. I have some real concerns for me, for my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren about the spirit that's in operation, about what it's going to do to Christianity in America. What's it going to do to the local church? What about our Constitution? I am really worried. And that's why there's such a fight that needs to be fought on our knees and asking God for mercy. Amen. As you can already see the handwriting on the wall about what America would look like three or four years down the road. Well, I just don't like Trump. <clears throat> listen, listen to this. It's not about Trump. It's not about his hair. It's about tweeting. It's not about this or that, but it's about the spirit that's in operation and who's going to lead America in a righteous way right. or who's going to take us away from God and our Constitution. In a nutshell, is that clear to you? Whoever you voted for, that's your choice. But how is this nation going to be led? I'm afraid if the one party gets in, it's going to make it harder for the church. If you think it's been hard lately with, since March with COVID, what will happen to us if they decide, you know, your churches, it's time for you to start paying taxes. No more tax exemption. And you know, we don't like what you're putting on Facebook, some of those messages about morals. Hmm. And you know, we want to be able to come in and tell you how many people can be here and when you can meet and we don't want you offending anybody anymore. Do you see this could possibly happen? Wave at me, don't wait, you know, do something. That's what I'm concerned about. That the church would have to go underground like it is with China. 
Or would God use this for a time of revival because of the oppression? Pray, people. Church, hear this. It is not what you see that determines how you will walk. It is what you are hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? God. Word of God. Our hearing, God, is more important than your physical eyes, what you see. But we're so governed by what we see. But we need to hear the Word of God. What are you hearing this morning? The Word, word of God. God. It is so incredibly <clears throat> important. The voice of the Gospel has been operating through the mouthpiece of the Word of God. And it's been operating through the fivefold ministry. Prophet, apostle, evangelist, teacher. After evangelist, teacher. With the pulse of what's going on in our society, Satan wants to remove the prophetic voice of the gospel and the local church. I'm going to say that again. Satan wants to remove the prophetic voice of the gospel and the local church. That's why what we're doing this afternoon at 3 o'clock is so important. Because what would they say to you? No, you can't do that either. Not too far off, is it? No, we don't want you people meeting down there on a Sunday afternoon worshiping God. You know why? Because what's going to happen in the spirit, we're going to punch a hole Woo! in the atmosphere. That's right. Amen. We're going to punch a hole in the atmosphere. We're going to cry out to God, bring revival to yes, this city of this valley. Yes. And it means pastors. This, this isn't a one church thing. This is churches. Pastors meeting together saying, let's worship Jesus in our city. I hope that you'll come. Church, hear this. We need the Word of God more than anything in your life. You need the Word of God more than anything in your life. We need the local church and the authority we've been given by God. We need the local church and the authority we have been given by God. The enemy does not want us to be together. He does not want us to gather. We need each other more than any other thing in your life. Besides your Bible and your, your God and your loved ones. We need each other. Amen? Amen. Amen? Listen to this. People are putting the opinions of others, whether it be the news, Facebook, other voices, above the authority of God. Oh, that can't be happening. You'd be surprised. People are putting the opinions of other people, news, social media, above the authority of God. The question that I started with, I'll ask you again. Who and what is the voice of authority in your life? Jesus. Who Jesus. and what is the voice of authority in your life? The answer is this. It must be God and His Word. Amen. It must be the local church. And it must be the relationships of the person that you're looking at up here. The voice of the fivefold ministry and the pastor, especially of the local church, people don't the people don't value that like they used to because well, I've got other voices I can talk to. I have other people's opinions. But when you realize, and I'm glad that God has kept me for 43 years with my pastor of valuing that relationship that I realized that God had placed him in, his, in my life for Carol and I, him and Vivian. 
as well as the other pastors on our apostolic board, as well as your own pastors in here, other people who are leadership responsibility. We need, the, we need the Word of God. We need the church. We need to recognize authority is in our life for our good and for our blessing, for our edification, for our growing up and not remaining babies. Relationships we have in the Lord. So as we close today, be strong, be alert, take courage. We talked about that, didn't we, Wednesday night? Prayer? We talked about being strong. We talked about taking courage. I'll have one more word. It's so important. Obedience. Many times we miss out on the blessings. It's because God's asked us to obey. Can you have blessings without obedience? No. Is it true? We can't have the blessing that God wants to give us without being obedient to the Lord. So I close with that question. What voice of authority will I listen to? What voice of authority will I listen to that God placed in your life? If there's ever a time for His people to have discernment, is now to ask this one question. Is that voice building me up or tearing me down or taking me away? Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. We need God's authority. And the authority is his word. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven, the scripture says. And the relationships, I'm a gift to you just like Dave Cunningham was a gift to me, according to the word of God. Praise Praise the Lord, brother. Amen. Amen. And so when all those voices are trying to undermine gathering the local church relationships and the authority that God has placed in your life, you need to drop check it. You know what drop kicking is? Johnny does. You just throw down on the ground. <laughs> Out of here. I'll just say this. Lakers and Dodgers won championship. That's something be, some people are happy about. Huh, John? Lakers and Dodgers? Yeah, I, don't, I didn't even follow this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, Let's stand together. This message today was to I believe to keep us focused on really what's important. Because I, we hear the voices that are always wanting to take us one side or to another. Yes. And I just have got to remember, God, what is important to me Amen. is that your word is truth. Yes, let me hear you. People are searching yes. for truth. It's the truth is in Jesus and Him only. Yes. There are not another truth. He is the truth. Oh, hallelujah. He is our Lord. He's our master. He's our yes. truth. God, we trust in you. Oh and he's Lord. the one that's established I his church. In you, that the church would be strong and steadfast and grounded and rooted. That we might grow up yes. into all things, oh, which is Christ. Right. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you. Yes, oh God. This morning, for the privilege of worshiping. Bless yes, Lord. Thank you for the presence of the Holy thank Spirit you. that yes, you, Lord. is here. Yes, oh God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, thank, thank you for your word that challenges you, us to stay focused on really yes, what is Lord. the right priorities from Lord. heaven yes, to us. Yes, they keep us focused. Yes, they keep us from not being blown from every rooted, wind of doctrine. Rooted and grounded, yes, Father. Because people do have wrong motives yes. of wanting to take advantage of us. Father, we thank you now. We give you praise. Yes. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.